now, from the main streets of Essex, England, this is WhatCast. I'm currently getting shit. Morning, uh, morning? What are we doing? This is evening. This is Friday <laughs> evening we're recording this. Morning on Sunday, if you're listening, right? Um... This is Whatcast, I'm Matt, and this is Spy Lee, SL today. It's got, is it SL? SL? I've run yeah. down here, Spy Lee, and you've come yeah. in here, Spy Lee. Right, Shit minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> so Lee is here. So this week we are doing the numbers stations, right? So this is a uh, request from Matthew Kerr, who's been requesting this since 2011, I think. Yeah. Like every time I do a request, uh, anyone got a request, he comes up with this one. So I thought, I'm going to I'm gonna do it this week. I'll put, I'll put it on the vote. And uh, see if anyone votes for it, and it won. Um, What's his name? Matthew Curd. Matt Curd of the Lemon. Mazza Curd. He's on the yeah. uh, he's on the Patreon as well. Old Curdy. So uh, yeah. cheers for this one. Um, and I've looked into into this is a bit where I've got some examples of number stations uh, sounds to play uh, that I've found. Um, and also I'm going to be going through what what the uh, the theories are of what this is. What these are? These are these are frequencies that you can pick up that have got weird coding and stuff. Some of them have got backwards um, music playing, like you know, like backwards messages on the music, that sort yeah. of shit. Some of them yeah. have got that. Some of them have just got women counting. And I found something out as well that I, I don't know if I can go into this, whether it expands on it at all later. But someone's found a radio station in something like May this year that's got it's a Russian radio station and it's counting down. Counting down. Yeah, how weird is that? It's like the fucking um, what's it called? That that show with not show that film. Um, Independence, Independence Day. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. What, so, so, why is it counting down? That's I thought it was on the Tube U. Maybe I'll try and find it when we get to the Tube U bit when I play the other clips and see what it's about. Yeah. But I don't really want to. Like, you can't play someone else's video and not talk about it. It's just not the dumb thing. But. No. It's, I don't think anyone knows why it's counting down, but it apparently it is. It's count. It's a Russian station. It's counting down. I don't. Know, when it gets to zero, what's going to happen? I don't know. But the fact that Starmer's sending <laughs> tanks over there and firing our missiles at them don't look good for us. I don't think. And this in the yeah. old uh, K of you here at the minute. So mm. Also, uh, this week we've got another dilemma. So if you enjoyed the snail one last week, of if the snail chases you forever for a million quid a year, and if it touches you, you die. Um, we've got another one of them. Uh, and also there is, uh, uh, well, we get to this, Lee asked for your problems last week, and we've got, we got one of them uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get into the topic and stuff. Also got a hate of the week at the end of the show, but that'll be on Patreon, patreon.com slash whatcast. Also, while we're talking about Patreon quickly, um, we've got a show for next week for Patreon, which is The Queen and What Happened to the Kids in Canada. That's on. If anyone knows yeah. what I'm talking about, right? I don't know what year it was, the 60s, was it, or something, Lee? Um, I, mean, I saw some, it on, did I see yeah. it on YouTube or something? I've, I've seen stuff about this before. I haven't yeah. looked into it yet, but I will be diving into it to record that for next week weekend on the patreon the weird shit in, happened when the queen and philip uh visited canada once back in the day um so we'll see what what comes of that uh show on the old, on the old patreon <laughs> back in the day back in the, the good, good old days and you could go to canada and all the kids went missing and yeah. nobody questioned anything back oh, in them good old days life was so, so much easier then but there's a bit of an issue with Patreon, thanks to Apple, right? So it's not my issue. Uh, and if you're on Patreon already at the moment, it won't be your issue either. But for some reason, from November, Apple want 30% of any subscriptions through Patreon. Not just my Patreon, any Patreon, right? But if you're already on Patreon, it won't affect you. If you join Patreon before November, it won't affect you. And the only reason it will affect you is if you uh, get the app, the Patreon app from the App Store on Apple. If you're on, uh, what's the other one? The lay the shit one that you've got, you know, not Spotify. Apple. No, no, Android. If you're Android. if you got if you're on Android, it won't affect you. Um, it's only if you if you download the the. The um, Patreon app from the App Store, and then you purchase a subscription to Whatcast Patreon or, or any Patreon, not just us, after November the 20th or something like that. Um, they will put a, an extra 30% for themselves on the because it's classed as an in app purchase. And they're threatening Patreon to kick them out of the App Store unless they comply with this. It won't <laughs> affect you if you go through. 
um, the, the uh, Android, or if you're already on there, or e- even if you're on Apple and you go through the the website rather than the app to subscribe. Mm-hmm. But I'm just giving you that warning out there now. And if you if you like using apps and you're I'm in an iron about whether to subscribe to Whatcast Patreon, do it before November. And then you'll get charged less for it because it's, it's nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything about it. They're going to take their cut um, if you go in through the app and subscribe through the app to to Whatcast Patreon through Apple, not through Android and not through the website, just through Apple, the app from the app Just store. go through the website, isn't it? Don't yeah, exactly. So you can just yeah. do it any other way. But I'm just just a fair warning then for people who's, uh, subscribing in the future. Now, nah, this is more than you said it'd be. It's not, it ain't going to me. I barely make any crumbs out of it anyway, but um, I don't give any more to them. But that's just a warning for you. So if you are having an iron about it, subscribe now and it'll never affect you. There's, there's an easy way to do it. <laughs> don't affect my wages. Don't affect my wages. Or, you know, you could support us on buymeacoffee.com. I might start putting shows up on there if this pisses people off too much, right? Because I'm allowed to do that as well. You can have a monthly just subscription on buymeacoffee.com. I might, if people will be more interested in that, I'll stick them the shows on there. Uh, and, yeah, we're doing, the as I've mentioned already, we're doing the Queen's Canada trip with Philip and whatever year it was when all the kids went missing from that weird kids place right so we we will be looking at that so we've got a bit of feedback now quickly then before we get into the topic this week and uh this is the this is the back of fade all right um Mm. where do we start here all right so we start with this one then this is from Bo. so it says hello ladies i've got to do it properly haven't i right so uh, we have to get the um this one for the worldstone raider doing it hello ladies lee here's my dilemma should I stay at my current job, which provides safety and security, or should I try and get back into the male modelling again? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's ended it with, because when I go, I go. <laughs> do you remember that? And we yeah. take the piss out of pussy blokes. Oh, I won't do anything about this, because when I go, I go. So yeah. what, what advice have you got? <laughs> what advice have you got for Bo then? Uh, if you feel safe and secure in your current job, then sometimes it's better than the devil you know. But if you, if really... I was working for Satan, I'd probably leave though. Yeah, uh, just to preface that, <laughs> uh, what is it? The battle of the devil, you know, both devils, either way, right? <laughs> but the thing is, if you hate your job that much, then fucking just leave and get a new job. Now, yeah, but, he didn't say he hated his job, though, did he? No. Um, I mean, he's obviously taken the piss. Why would you leave your job? Well, he's obviously... You like are you like the, the the Australian male version of Sticky Vicky? Is that what you mean by male modelling? <laughs> you wrap your <laughs> cock around things while people are eating their dinner and shit, right? Uh, I would say, I've always been safety first with work. If you can tolerate a job and it don't mm. cause you any stress at home and it pays all your bills... I'll stick at it. I can't be bothered to be, um, what's the word, Lee? Uh, no, no, when you're ambitious, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no, I don't, I don't do ambition. Like to me, ambition's a risk, right? If you, if yeah. you hate your life, ambition's a good thing. If you like your life and you've got no stress, why change anything? Yeah, that's my, that's get, my yeah, philosophy. Exactly that. If you've got no stress in your life, then yeah. don't change it. Because keep... chasing money and, and finding misery, but yeah. with a bit more money, it, to me, it ain't worth it. That's no, there's just literally no point of, of that. I, I saw uh, on social media today, on the way to work, this guy, right? He was standing on his, on his balcony, pointing at people. It's like five o'clock where he was. Pointing at people walking along the street, like on their way home from work. Here's a nine till five. Here's a nine till five. Look, that person no, there's a nine till five. Is it one of them conspiracy theorists? No, no. He's got it so, all sussed. No, so he was like, if you wanna, if you wanna um, have free up your time and earn money while you're sleeping, all this bullshit, then yeah. subscribe to my uh, website and I, I will tell, I will send you yeah. an email. Oh, how no. to uh, how to earn three million quid in a minute? Yeah, it's don't affect my wages. Yeah, that's what I, I just think to myself, if that was the case, mate, every cunt would be doing it, wouldn't they? But well, I would, yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. It's not as easy as that, is it? That bloke oh. on the street. You just made the list. Get him on there, right? So yeah. uh, what else we got? So oh, oh, dilemma time, right? Don't want to dwell on this. Hopefully that answers your, your bullshit question, but over there. So, <laughs> so this is the dilemma, right? 
So I, I, f I made this one up myself. I heard the snail one, but I made this one because I thought this is a bit of a dilemma. This is quite a lot. Uh, quite a lot. You got to listen to this carefully before you answer, right? So this is yeah. this is a what would you rather, as they call them, or what yeah. would you do in this situation? So it's so you can either take five days a week minimum wage, six weeks holiday a year paid, yeah, weekends off. But your minimum wage. So Monday to Friday, weekends off, six weeks holiday paid to do with what you want. Or yeah. you can have a million pound a year, but every day you've got to go into London, central London, and press a button and then go home. Once a week, go into central no. London. Every single day of the year. And it's got to be nine o'clock in the morning and you've got till 9.01 to press the button. So you've got one minute, it's great. So you've yeah. got to get there early. You yeah. have to go into central London in rush hour to press this button. You can't yeah. miss a day for any circumstance. So no weekends away, no holidays at all. Five yeah. year contract. So one million pound a year for five years. Yeah. You cannot miss a day. You get paid yearly. So at the end of the year, you get your first million. Nothing till then, right? First right. million at the end of the year. Continue. If you miss any days within five years, you pay all back what you've got so far. I would definitely go minimum wage. Yeah. That's a bit of an hard one, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. in your mind, it's all I've got to do is go and press a button. But say you get ill, someone close to yeah. you gets ill. You no know all of these. Every day, Saturday, Sunday, getting up, for, getting up in the morning on the alarm, getting into London in the rush hour to press the button, and then go home again. Fair enough, your day's done by half ten yeah. every single day, but it's every single day. But but the thing is, no excuses, like, and one minute. Uh, like, say, say the yeah. trains ain't running, your whole thing's yeah. fucked. Yeah. But say say for example as well is like you can't spend your money and you're not allowed what? to move into london you've got to stay like outside london yeah but the thing is if you earn that million what are you going to spend it can't go on holiday because you have to go and press the fucking button exactly you can't you, do anything yeah you can't but go away for five years you'll be absolutely made for life yeah but no. you've got to do it every five years is a long time yeah yeah to so do it every day for five years or the deal's off yeah no and you only get mean. paid on on uh december the 31st of the first year for the first time no, so the first year's wage. poverty anyway. Yeah. Definitely minimum wage. Six weeks holidays paid. Weekends off. That's that's a good deal. I like it. All right. What about this one then? What about the button or the snail? The snail. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what the snail is, go back to the last. I'm not explaining the yeah. snail again. Go back to last Absolutely the snail. Because... Because I can evade the snail. I can right. still go on holiday. Let me know what you would do. Listeners out there, watchers out there, what would you do in this scenario? I'm sure there's people that would take the deal for the five million, million a year. Some people don't have holidays anyway. Yeah. Some people don't yeah. do much. And you could, you could, you know, from the flip side, you could retire in five years very wealthy and never have to press any buttons again. Say if you did five years, four years and got to New Year's Eve and the trains didn't run or there was no way yeah. to get to this button. And you, I steal a car. You steal would, a I car. Would, I was still a car. Yeah. So you got there and you pressed the button and the button yeah. didn't work, like, but they didn't know and they didn't believe you. And it was like, fuck, I'm press, I'm doing, I'm here. Yeah. No, fuck, that's hard. No, minimum wage. I couldn't. Uh, that's stressful, man. I couldn't but, do that. But if you take minimum wage, you can't bet yourself. You have to remain on win minimum wage for those five years, completely minimum wage. Mate, I'd, I'd rather be skint and happy than fucking rich. Than yeah, would you be happy with minimum wage? Like, there's a lot, a lot. Like, you know £11.44 I mean? £11. an hour. Is that what you pay people? 
<laughs> is that how you know? Yeah. Right. Anyway, should we get on? We get on with topic. Yeah. Then? Let me know what you think about that. What would you do? And also with the snail one, we didn't get any feedback on the snail one last week. Got plenty of laughs and stuff on the little clips that I put up, but no, no actual. I think people. No one wants to. No one wants to commit themselves, even though it's a it's a fictional scenario. People still won't commit themselves to a choice. You didn't really have to have the chase by a snail. You could have just <laughs> fucking replied. <laughs> I wasn't actually you know, offering you a killer snail, was I? Do you know what? Do you know what? That's what people people just lack engagement these days. Mm. No oh, one wants to engage it. in anything. Oh, it's, it's like just doing doing this 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 thing here, and all yeah. you want is a bit of engagement. People just I'm not engaging with that. Yeah. <sighs> It's Quit like then. two minutes, two minutes of your time. I know, <laughs> one second. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. click a like or write yes or no or vote yeah. on a poll. Like, yeah. a, vote oh, on a poll. Oh, my life's far too busy. Anyway, let me scroll through social media, yeah. see what's going anyway. on. Anyway, yeah. let's get let's get into... Uh, yeah. It is it is cognitive dissonance. Let's get into a um, topic then, shall we? So what yeah. we're doing, um, the numbers uh, thing this week, numbers stations, yeah. right? Thanks yeah. to old Curdy. And uh, it, I've got this. This is a discovery uh, channel. I'm just going to read this out. I've got this up here, right? So I'm going to going to put Lee somewhere where I can see him. I and, asked um, uh, ChatGPT. Oh, was that how you? Is that your research? Was it? Yeah. yeah they done it for me. It's, it was all. It was all two minutes of writing what I wanted, and yeah. they just gave me all. All right, here we go. So it says here, this is the article from Discovery. This is uh, where this is from. I'm going to put you the other side so I can. It's easier that way. It just fits. Right. Okay. So it says numbers radio stations often shrouded in mystery and intrigue. I didn't even hear of this until Matthew Kerr mm. told me about it. Right. I've captivated the attention of shortwave radio hobbyists and mystery seekers alike for decades. I used to have a CB radio back in the day. I know you did. I was 90s. thinking about this earlier. Yeah, but I never ever knew yeah. of any of this shit. I just used to yeah. talk to randos uh, in the local area, the main streets, and potentially uh, go and meet them. And then people would say, "Oh yeah, do you want to, I'll fucking meet you for a fight, then, mate." Will we are? <laughs> <laughs> what was... turning up for a few of them? And no, no what was the CB lingo? Uh, one nine for a copy. It was like the nineteen channel. Uh, one nine, yeah. one nine. I was Invader One on there. Yeah, that was my name. Yeah, the Darth of Invader One. Uh, no, I was Invader 1, and my mate was Invader There's about eight of us. We just used to oh, go right, into... Okay. Like, people would be having... Because the thing is, whoever's the closest to each other on CB radio, yeah. then they've got a good signal that no one else can go over the top of. Because if you come in and key up your mic, you can just talk yeah. over people if you're closer to the person that, that they're talking... Closer to them than the person that they're talking to is. So mm -hmm. eight of us used to just go around all the channels and just start a conversation over the top of someone else's conversation <laughs> on the same channel. <laughs> about nothing. I'd be like, yeah, you go in there. Yeah, we go there tonight. And they go, it's Excuse me, we're here. We go, yeah, we don't care. And just carry on talking. And they can't hear each other, only us. And wherever they go, we'd just follow them and do the same. We was real, you know, old to be 35 again. <laughs> now, we were really childish. We was in our teens and shit, right? But it was uh, it was funny. Anyway, the, these stations characterized by their unique broadcasts of seemingly random sequences of numbers, words, and sounds are often voiced by a synthetic or eerily calm human voice and sometimes uh, preceded by a piece of music or a set of tones, serving as a marker or call sign for the intended recipients. So uh, in, our, in, in, the, in the, the latest one is apparently a countdown from Russia that we're the intended uh, recipients. <laughs> of a nuke. Yeah. <laughs> The exact origins and purposes of the numbers spy stations are shrouded in secrecy, adding to their mistake. In one form or another, these broadcasts have been uh, operational since World War I, gaining prominence during the Cold War. Their persistence into the digital age, despite the advent... Oh, they had a calendar there with some chocolates in it. <laughs> despite the advent of a more secure communication methods only deepens their intrigue. Does it deepen it to you, Lee? Uh, are, you deep, are you deeply intrigued by this? Uh, do you know what? It's quite interesting. When I, when I first started researching it, because I actually looked on the tube of you first. Yeah, you always go myself, there first. Yeah, I know. I thought to myself, oh, spies and shit. So, yeah. <sighs> When I, I just when remembered, I actually, right, remind me once we've done this, I've got loads more feedback that I didn't, I just stopped at Bo's one because we, that went yeah. on to the agony, but I've got loads more feedback. So remind me I've got feedback to do at the end of this. So if I haven't read your feedback, hang about until, um, until we're done with this uh, topic. Um, are they so, 
Uh, so what are number stations? Are these bizarre broadcast coded messages for a clend- clandestine, that's the word, isn't it? Um, operatives yeah. uh, on the field. Um, what, the field over there? I don't know what they're doing out there. Are they <laughs> secret military communications or are they, for some uh, people believe, forms of mind control? Mm. Uh, messages to and from extraterrestrials. People think that as well. Do you know what? They what? use our radios to communicate. I thought they could just read I know, yes, yeah. telepathically. Or they've got some, yeah. they must have some uh, techn- te- technology that's better than ours. But when I see these big towers with all these satellite dishes on and things, I thought, like, yeah. what the fuck are they for? Yeah. Like, because they're really high up. 5G, so they're really isn't it, these up. days? Don't yeah. <clears throat> There's one in Upminster. Is there? Yeah, there's, well, there's one everywhere though, isn't there? That's not that's not yeah. an unusual. But a lot, one, a lot of them are dormant now. There's a lot that don't, don't actually get used. They're dormant. Dormant. Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry, Stevie. I thought so. So uh, <laughs> let's take a trip to the ultra secret world of clandestine radio transmissions in an attempt to shed some light on the baffling number stations mystery. Right. Let's have a read on it. And they've tried to do things here, like they've written secretive simplicity, but they've put 5-3 for S-E, for secretive. And then they've put 5-1 for simplicity. Um, mm. Yeah, I think they've been all clever there. Yeah. Uh, and then it says, uh, to answer the question, what are number stations, is deceptively simple. Number stations are a mysterious shortwave radio station that broadcast secretive numbers, letters, and Morse code, often read by a real synthetic or distorted voice. These transmissions are typically straightforward, consisting of a series of spoken words or numbers or Morse code messages. I used to try and do Morse code on my walkie talkies, but I was a little kid. Um, <laughs> beep, 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 like we can, you can't decipher that unless you've got a book in front no. of you telling you what all yeah. of it is. Yeah. Um, uh, do you remember Inspector Morse? Do you reckon he, he spoke yeah. with that? On his, do, you know, uh, do you know what? I, I was watching a war film and there was a, a Morse code message coming through to one to one of the other soldiers, and he was like, "Yeah, this says this." I thought, "How the fuck did you know that?" That yeah, says I know. that. Oh, no one would but, know it that quick. No but matter the thing how trained is, they are in Morse code. Mm, but the thing is, with Morse code, I think there was a there was a, a thing where back in the day of these this Morse code go, go, going off on his towers. Mate, I can't mm. even talk today. No, no. Is um no no change there then. No, no change there. <laughs> is uh it started coming up on someone's TV, like all these lines. Well, this and shit did. Yeah. That, yeah. that was a uh, poltergeist, wasn't it? No, no. Well, that's that's one of them. But um, don't go into the light. No, no. So, so some Morse code, like letters and uh, lines, started coming up on someone's TV. So the yeah. woman actually, the woman actually informed the police or something. You mean told the police, not informed? Yeah. I've got to use ridiculously long words to say told. Yeah. Informed. <laughs> you know that song, <laughs> Informer. Yeah. If, uh, what's the new Informer? Yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Going uh, to damn down. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, sometimes kind of mechanically generated sounds or a distinct tune or set to tones to indicate the start or end of the broadcast. Some have suggested the music and sounds are designed to confirm the authenticity of the sender. How are number stations transmitted? And there's a little CB radio I'm looking at here. Um, yeah. Because I could I have done this back in the day. The beautifully uh, empherical or something, nature of numbers radio stations lies in their simplicity and obfuscation. A basic shortwave transmitter and an anonymous and an anonymous location are sufficient to start a number station. This simplicity also makes it difficult to trace the origins of these broadcasts, adding to their secretive nature. Shortwave radio is chosen as a primary medium. Um, what well, like Claire Broad turned up yeah. uh, for these broadcasts due to its unique uh, properties. Well, it's got, they own, owns houses as well, this radio. Shortwave <laughs> frequencies have the ability to travel long distances, bouncing off the ionosphere. See, take note, Flat Earthers. This is our, this is our radio frequencies travel, right? They bring to, I can, I can hear this over there if the earth curved. Because it bounces <laughs> off the ionosphere. 
and uh, reaching receivers thousands of miles away from the source. Thought, thought, thought. This makes ideal uh, shortwave ideal for international or long uh, distance communication. Additionally, shortwave radios are relatively inexpensive and wild, widely available, allowing the intended recipients of these messages, often speculated to be spies or operatives in foreign countries, to receive them without attracting attention. Well, you've attracted plenty of attention. You, we're on Whatcast now. Has there so much attention you've attracted? The strengths and consistency of the signals vary, with some numbers spy stations transmitting on a regular schedule, while others appear sporadically, uh, often without warning. The seemingly random nature of these broadcasts adds to their enigmatic appeal, uh, and they can often be heard by anyone with a basic shortwave radio receiver. Why would you listen to it, though? It's not, that, it's not exactly interesting, is it? No. Like, what, I'll should I put a podcast on a radio show or this shit? Beep! Four, five, four, three, two, that's a fucking... I'm after to listen to that. Tell me mates this on. But if you, if, you think, if you think of it this way, right? So, if, say, for example, all the internet went down. Yeah. All, everything went down. Mm. They would go back to shortwave radio. I know. I know. It's mad, isn't it? Pe- yeah. People say to me, why have you got a DVD player? I said, because everything's run on Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's if right. If the Wi-Fi goes down, I've got DVDs yeah. to watch. I, I think I've still got one in the loft, a, a yeah. DVD player, but it's not down, and I've got nowhere that I'd want to put it or whatever. But, yeah, yeah. I nearly bought a, a a CB radio the other day. Not, really? Actually, about three days ago, before I even knew we were doing this. Yeah. It just popped up randomly on on uh, Amazon, and it's trying to have a resurgence. But you're not going to, because you can talk to anyone around the world on the internet, like well, no matter yeah. how far they are. But then yeah. you can have a wank if you get someone from the end of the street on your CB. <laughs> oh, look how far I've got! Do you, do you think it's for nostalgic purposes? Probably, because I used to, I was quite into it for a couple of years, and I met, I did meet a lot of people. Some of them I still actually know and talk to quite regularly, yeah. which is weird. Yeah. Um, and I only knew them from the from the B. Uh, anyway, uh, one time pads, this says, well, that is whether it's got a tenor lady or something going on here. Then what's going on? Uh, the message is transmitted by a number of stations, I believe, to be coded instructions or information intended for spies or military personnel operating in foreign countries. The use of a one time pad, and then it gets a bit of piss on it and you take it off. An encryption <laughs> method where each page uh, of the pad is used to decode messages and then destroy it ensures that these messages remain virtually unbreakable if used correctly. Uh, like coded messages emanating from uh, the numbers radio stations themselves, a one-way time pad works. Uh, work is also deceptively simple. Uh, it's not deceptive that you keep saying that yeah. now, don't I? It's deceptively yeah. simple. I don't, I'm not even following along with me. I'm reading it. So ain't that simple, is it? <laughs> uh, there are nothing more. They are nothing more than pads of paper on which words are assigned and seemingly random string of numbers. When the agent in the field here's a set of numbers he or she then refers to the pad to decipher the message the beauty is that the numbers on the pad are only used once so yeah you see this in films didn't you oh, i can hear this yeah. uh you know sos message let's decipher what they're talking about and some bloke always knows how to do it it's just conveniently from a <laughs> plane crash yeah a bunch of people going to spain and one of them's a spy of course he is in every plane. i was in the military i can do this yeah i was in the yes yes why you got a <laughs> southern american accent then I ain't got the sis sounds like cognitive dissonance <laughs> to me mate this has led to widespread speculation about the purpose and origin of these broadcasts and the number stations uh, mystery includes theories ranging from government communications to alien signals. However, due to the inherently secretive nature of these stations, concrete information about their operators or intended audience remains elusive. Uh, so what do you think that you've figured it all out then? So this is some of the most famous number stations then. It's going to read them out here. Um, so let's get down. The Lincolnshire Poacher is one of them. Yeah, I saw that one. I was yeah. like, what is it that all about? It keeps popping up. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he, there's, there's something from the Lincolnshire Poacher in the sounds I'm going to play after this, right? Hmm. Uh, named after the English folk tune that preceded its transmissions, it is believed the Lincolnshire Poacher operated from the early to mid 70s until around hmm. 2008. <laughs> Fuck me. Poacher, you probably should have called it a day when CB's fucked off at about 1995 and you carried on till 2008. 
Why does um, he call himself the Lincolnshire Poacher? I don't think he calls himself anything. I was just like a recorded thing that they just played yeah. every now and then. I don't know. Because they just said it was an English folk tune called that called the Lincolnshire Poacher. That's what that's what played at the beginning of the broadcast. Broadcast typically uh, involved a series of five digit numbers in an English accented female voice. So that one of them pawn voices there. Yeah. Um, but between around six and sixteen megahertz on the shortwave frequency, some believe it was operated by the British secret intelligence service MI6 with transmissions said to have originated first from government-owned location in Buckinghamshire and later from an RAF base in Cyprus. Did you yeah. did you know about the Lincolnshire, um, <coughs> whatever the fuck he's called? It wouldn't um, surprise me. There's, there's, there's enough army bases in Cyprus. So. Yeah. Uh, the next one is called U UVB76 or The Buzzer. He's called. The Buzzer. I've got this one on there. The Buzzer. Yeah. What, do you, what do you know about The Buzzer then? If you, uh, so it's if you... a Russian number station that has been broadcasting since the 19, 1970s. It says the late 70s here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've probably got the same stuff you've got. Yeah. yeah. It's believed to be still active, it's saying here. It probably is because the Russians are so ancient in everything they do. I know. This is probably like, the countdown one, actually. Yeah. It's probably, funny if they say it's countdown on it and instead they turn it on and it goes like the countdown TV show, not actually yeah. a countdown to nuclear Armageddon. Only Russia would build trenches to fight a war. What do you mean by that? I don't understand. Like in, in, in Ukraine, all the trenches, all the trench warfare going on. Speaking of you, have you noticed that Ukraine have suddenly took loads of Russian land and that's yeah, now, yeah, that, we're applauding yeah. this. Yeah, so Russian are villains for going into Ukraine and taking land. Ukraine are taking Russian land. Yeah, well done, Ukraine. So yeah. now they're going to take but, the whole of Russia and that's going to be fine. But do, but do you know what? But do you know why they're doing that? It's because they want, they want to set up negotiations. So if they take Russian, Russian land, then they, they've got that to negotiate with. Because at the minute, <clears throat> Russia want to go into negotiations, but want basically want this. So all the all the people in Luhansk, Donetsk, and the Kharkiv region are going to be part of Russia. And they want all of Ukrainian forces to pull out of that region mm. and it, it, it to be a part of Russia. Also, they want you. So basically, they want they want to say, let's end the war, and I say, all right, then if you if you give us our land back, yeah, right, we'll do. No, you could. That they're they're not going to give the land back because oh. Russia reckon that they Russia now recognise that land as Russian territory, so they're not going to give it back. No, what I'm saying is, if you if they say to Ukraine, you give our land back, yeah, and we'll give you your that other land back. Is that what they're hoping for? Well, well, that, that's what Ukraine are hoping for, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Who because, knows? Yeah. Because it's, it's Russian thing. It's, Violated it's like, by gas! It's, it's, just, it's just craziness, mate. It says here about this, back to the Russians, uh, this thing that's probably counted down. The station yeah. may be Russian and broadcasts 25 tonnes per minute. Well, are they weighing the broadcast now? What do they, what do they mean by this? <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours a day. Scale. Yeah. yeah. As it as it comes out from the from the uh from whatever it comes out from the frequency thing, is there like a scale where it passes over and they know. weigh every bit of frequency? You imagine like the out. sort of knob that's listening to this, probably Fred, who's about hundred and two. Yeah. Oh, Ethel, Ethel, get the scales. The Russians are transmitting again. <laughs> she brings him into the kitchen where he's sitting there listening to his little radio on the kitchen side. He puts the fucking broadcast on the scales. 25 tons. Yeah. How the fuck did you get scales to measure that much, Fred? In the kitchen. You only go up to that 20, whatever, you know, what would it be? I don't okay, even know. Uh, milliliters. Uh, yeah. Milligrams. Something like that. Milliliters. Yeah. Next one, anyway. Moving on, Swedish Rhapsody. Do you remember when you you and you sung the Bohemian Rhapsody in uh, yeah. in Tenerife? Do you want to give us oh, a burst here? Not really. <laughs> oh, I'll leave it then. I'll I, play I, in between. I, I'll, I'll post a video a on Patreon. I, got, I haven't got a pillar and crisps. Any condoms on your ears? Yeah. Uh. Operating between 5.733 and 11.525 megahertz. No one cares. 
Right, they actually might care. If you've got a shortwave radio, just tune it into that and listen to this fucking Swedish Rhapsody and see if there's anything like the Mercury of Freddy singing this, right? One of the most famous number stations gained notoriety for its transmissions of a music box rendition of Swedish Rhapsody, a melody followed by a girl's voice reading numbers in German. Which fucking language do you want to speak in on this uh, radio station? Originally thought to be uh, live, later discovered to, uh, to be machine-generated. It was machine generated. It was most active during the Cold War era, according to declassified documents released by the Polish government in 2014. It was operated by the Polish People's Republic, which existed from 1947 to 1989. However, the last broadcast date was said to be as late as 2007. We're broadcasting right now. Do you reckon, like, in the future, people say, I found these two bellends. I think they might be spies. Yeah. Uh, yeah we know, know what, well, we're, apparently it was shields. Yeah, shields, yeah. 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 Sorry, the, thing, the thing is, it's like the, this is ancient communications um, technology. It's like what we are speaking on now in like a hundred years' time. This is going to be ancient. It is. Yeah. People, yeah. If we're still around, if people are still yeah. around, we won't be around. But no. <sighs> Mind you, if you take all the latest supplements, you will be, according to the internet. Brain juice. Brain juice to be around at 206. We so, used to live, human used to live to 400, and they gave <laughs> us all this damn poison, and now we all die at 75. Did you see his latest rant on the. Um, yeah, he's the got thing. a bad feeling about the world or something. Yeah. He's, he's shitting himself. Yeah, yeah, he like, goes, I've got anxiety. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm, he goes, I'm not a weak person. I'm, I'm a very tough person. Yeah, I'm, I'm a tough guy. Yeah. I'm 300 stone and I got anxiety issues. <laughs> Not as anxious as your scowls, mate. Even Fred's kitchen couldn't weigh you. Attention. This next one's called Attention. Do you remember Sergeant Slaughter used to say that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Known for the repeated Spanish phrase, Attention. Uh, before the reading of number groups, this numbers radio station was particularly active in the 1980s and 1990s. It's widely... Uh, Alex Jones is back, widely believed to have yeah. operated in Cuba, possibly sending coded messages to spies in the United States and elsewhere. Yosemite Sam, have you heard this one? Yosemite Sam. This is the bloke that used to chase Bugs Bunny around, isn't it? Yeah, I know. That's what I thought. Yeah. And then he Bugs Bunny would go down a hole. Yosemite yeah. Sam would shoot the hole uh, and the Bugs Bunny would come out of a different hole behind Yosemite Sam, tap him on the shoulder and go, yeah, what's up, Doc? And oh, Yosemite oh, Sam would talk to him like it weren't really him. Go on. Or what he would do is he would get the barrel of his gun. Put his finger pull in. It, pull it, no, pull it under the hole so it, yeah. and bend it so it comes out the hole behind it. Yeah. And when shoot he himself. shoots, he shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> Or his gun he doesn't go off. He shoots down the hole at Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny then pops out the hole with a carrot, looks at him as if your gun ain't working, puts a carrot in the end of the gun or something, right? Yeah. He then takes yeah. the carrot out, looks down the end of the gun himself and tries to shoot himself in the face. It then works, but all Yosemite Sam gets is a black face. <laughs> so why are you trying to kill a rabbit with a gun that only gives you a black face? That's what I want to know, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get into this station. This unusual station transmitted only a few times between December uh, 2004 and February 2005, but gained notoriety for broadcasting a clip from the cartoon character. Why are you still pissing yourself about this shit, right? <laughs> you Semity Sam, followed by a data burst, <laughs> which began pre precisely seven seconds. Do you want to sing us a bit of that? What data? Seven burst? seconds away, wasn't it? That song. No, I got 21 seconds to go. No, seven uh, seconds away. It was uh, the racist song or something. They talk about race, wouldn't they? You must know the song. You'd know if no, you heard I don't, it. No, no, You would. It was a big hit. After it. the top, I'm not singing it, I'm reading this out. You're, you're, you're the sideshow here. After the top of the uh, of the hour, what's that mean? Its origins and purpose remains a mystery, but it was rumoured to have located in or around Albuquerque, New Mexico. Right, okay, Yosemite Sam. Uh, so it says, what are number stations for? Number stations have long been a source of fascination and speculation, leading to a range of theories around their purpose and origins. These theories range from plausible and well-grounded to the more outlandish and speculative. Here are some of the prevailing theories. So this is all what they might be. Yeah. Number one is espionage communications. Did you, you thought they were, right? Yeah, absolutely. So why do you think that this is the case? 
well, the thing is, any sort of communication is espionage communication. Is is this espionage? I'm talking to you right now. You said any sort of communication. So I'm talking to you. Is well, this no, espionage it, it, communication? No, it could it could be could potentially be. Oh, we're just both so shields. This is not espionage, yeah, right? Yeah. Espionage. <laughs> Who thinks of these shit words? I don't know. Like, Who made yeah. that word up as well? Uh, yeah, I'm arresting you yeah. for espionage. Spionage. I what got a good think? word that means that you're secretly doing something. What's your word? Spy. Three letters. That's a bit shit. I got a better one than that. What is it? It's a bit more simple. Oh, yeah, really? Simpler than spy? I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> listen to this. Hey, I spy an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to spy. Thanks. <laughs> So they're believed to broadcast encrypted messages to spies in foreign countries. The use of shortwave radio, uh, do they use long wave, uh, for these transmissions makes uh, sense as it allows messages to be sent over long distances and can be received discreetly with relatively simple radio equipment. Right? So there you go. So that's the spy bit of it. Uh, the the yeah. espionage, as we might say, uh, differently. So military communications, ain't that the same thing? Sim similar yeah. to the espionage theory, some believe these stations are used for secure military communication. This could include sending orders or information to soldiers, ships, embassies, uh, or foreign territories where secure direct communi communication lines might not be safe. Um, Non-governmental organisations. A less common theory is that some of these number spy stations might be operated by non-governmental uh, organisations or large corporations for secure e internal communication. However, there's little evidence to support this theory. Scientific use. Some speculation is that these stations could be involved in the scientific research, possibly transmitting data for uh, experiments that require remote communication, such as geographically isolated or uh, politically sensitive areas. Again, there is little evidence to suggest this theory is likely why I bring it up then. Art or social experiment? No, it's definitely not that. Cultural or historical preservation? Nope. Conspiracy theories. One of the most outlandish end of the spectrum. The, the, there are numerous conspiracy theories. These range from the idea that numbers radio stations are a form of mind control or psychological operations uh, to the belief that they are communicating with the extraterrestrial beings or involved in a supernatural phenomena. So some people think these are ghosts and shit, right? No, that, that's actually a really good theory, though. Mind what, that they're ghosts? No, that mind control. Yeah. Is that a good theory? Because it why though? If because if you wanted to do mass mind control, you just play something in the background of Radio One or something and get a big audience. Yeah, like but that's shit. that's the thing. It's like TV is, is a form of mind control. It ma manipulates your decision. Is it though? I mean, it, they they can manipulate you with the news, but I don't I don't yeah. buy into this tell a lie vision and all. This oh shit no, no, I don't. I don't people I don't, come out with that, right. That, that's no. a very flat earth thing. Yeah. Um, which I'm programming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's play some of these sounds then from these things quickly. Um, yeah. I might turn it into an alien. Be and careful. then we'll get and then we'll get on with the rest of the feedback, and then we'll go do yeah. hate of the week for the patreons out there, patrons. Yeah. The, the the guys, team Whatcast. Right. Share straight hey, screen. Uh, so yeah, this is the creepiest. Um. Uh. What was it called again? Creepy five creepiest number station sounds ever recorded. And I've listened to these; they're not that creepy. So, if you're hoping for something spookier, hmm. sorry about that. Espionage to, to you. Espionage, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's listen. So, so these are um, they've got the bloke that's put this video up. He's playing some really shit music in the background to try and be spooky. So that that isn't actually playing on the station, but you'll you'll know the difference. Can you see this? All right, Lee. Yep. Oh, and dear. you can hear this, yeah? Yeah. So this is from the Gong Station uh, in East German Intelligence. Force, uh, 
jo Joakim something or another. I don't know what this is. This is a KGB thing that they're about to play in a minute. I think. If they just fucks off with this shit music. <laughs> there you go. Backwards music they're going to play here, right? So this is uh, one of the... This is... Uh, Backwards music station transmits what is believed to be encoded tones instead of music. This next one. Let's skip forward a bit here. So the Lincolnshire poacher's coming up here, right? <laughs> here he is, the old poach, poachy. Evidence suggests that the Lincolnshire poacher began operating in the 70s and was transmitted from the island of Cyprus. So let's see what he has to say, the old Linky. Hang on, ain't that a finger of fudge is just enough to give yeah. your kids a treat? Yeah. From the advert for back in the day. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Cool. Uh, that was supposed to be from the MI6, that uh, station there. What's this next one here? Swedish Rhapsody, this next one's from. Fair enough. So this last one is the buzzer. This one's called the buzzer. A Russian station. Fuck off with the music, mate. <laughs> So, so that was interrupted there. Well, that'd do for that. That was interrupted yeah. there by some Russian voice called the Monolith, apparently. Right. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what that's about. But um, was that the countdown? Uh, no, that weren't the countdown. I don't think. Oh. But it might have been. Who knows? Right. But uh, so, that, was you spoke to her by them then, Lee? Do you know, a couple of them were standing really strange. Like, yeah, like if I'm if I'm just like turning the the knob on my uh, radio and that yeah. comes up, that just sounds like between station drivel, doesn't it? Like yeah, I wouldn't it listen does, to yeah. see what that is. Yeah, at any but point. I think in in the messaging, I think in the actual like, obviously the numbers mean something. Yeah. So and and the music like not what he was playing not on, but the some of the music in it probably meant something. No, it meant it meant here comes the ice cream man. That's what it yeah. sounded like to me. It was just fucking just really weird. Like you just think to yourself, it is it is a bit eerie. Yeah, it is a bit eerie. Hmm. Right, let's get back to some more feedback then. <laughs> <laughs> Before we hear you all out with that one. So what are you babbling about? Uh, by the way, Nathan Oakley there that I just played there, he's he, he, yeah. like because of this final experiment, uh, the flat earthers have all fell out now because half of them are trying to make excuses before the event because they know that there's going to be a 24 hour sun and they they need an excuse. Yeah. Uh, so they're making them. And some of them are saying, I don't think it's going to be a 24 hour sun. So I'm just going to stick to what I've always said because uh, they're the ones I respect. They really do believe yeah. the earth is flat. People like Oakley is trying to explain it before it happens. So they've all kind of had a big split. And he had a big uh, YouTube channel that had about 20 or 30 people. His, his latest episode, he had 
four people on it. Really? And, uh, about 20 comments. Yeah, he's just complete because he's alienated himself from everybody else. But uh, yeah. now he's started trying to actually um, go to other channels to say, might, might actually come on this show now. He's be so desperate. So anyway, this is from uh, Are the Olympics a Satanic Ritual? This bit of feedback here. This is Adam West. This is the Jaded Soul. Adam West, this is. Sin is, a tr- is transgression of the law of God. Listen to Walter Venith. I think his, his name's not that. Uh, it's v- Vith or something, right? Because mm-hmm. I looked him up. Uh, listen to what he talks about. Good show. Well done, Lee. And then it says lads, right? <laughs> So the reason he's saying well done, Lee, is because everyone's praising you for your knowledge of Christianity, right? You get these oh, right, God yeah. squad like Adam. Like Adam doesn't yeah. like me very much because I, he's a flat earther. So none of yeah. them re- really do. Um, so he loves to tell me what a good job you've done on the show. So, uh, <laughs> there, he, there he is doing it again. Yeah. But, you, but you, your knowledge of, of religion seems to have impressed some people, Lee. So, oh, right. Okay. Well done. Uh, this is the summit. So, Boss Andrea or Andrea, right? Uh, love listening to your show. Only podcast I subscribe to. That is from a, a, a Holiday Blues and Flat Earth, the final experiment show I did back in the day. Uh, this is from. Oh my God! This is a flat earther. Um, Got to get the old baby crying sound out. For this, <laughs> so this is from a flat Earth debate that I did. Uh, Zonk God. This person's called right. Being this condescending and hateful to strangers merely over their beliefs is quite sad. Yeah, you would know, Flat Earthers. You literally spend your entire lives online trying to mock everybody with your perceived knowledge that you don't have. You wonder why Flat Earthers don't want to join. Now, I don't I don't wonder why they don't want to join. I know why they don't want to join because they get annihilated whenever they join. Yeah. Uh, when all you do is insult. I don't ever insult like when flat earthers come into my lives and try and insult me, then game on. But I don't ever insult them until they do. Um, these are some comments from the Patreon. Uh, the show we did, the, the, the hate of the week when we did about the, the knife crime and that the other week says so from Damien Mann. This was a build up of things. Uh, the abhorrent murders of children was the straw that broke uh, the camel's back. You aren't far you aren't far right because you want closed borders with real security checks being carried out. We now spend 8 million a day uh, housing illegal economic migrants. It's a joke. The Labour government have confirmed now that they will put illegal migrants above us on all social housing lists. Boils my piss. Yeah. There you I'll, go. I'll, I'll is, get that. Yeah, that, get that. That is, uh, it is really What annoying. people don't realise is, like, I, I've got sympathy for both sides of the argument, but people that just dismiss the other side of the argument, that, that is a valid point he's making there. Yeah. Right, so Naomi, this is a new, a new Patreon, Naomi from our Ireland. Uh, shocked with what's happening, but your PM at the moment is very centralist, unfortunately. I'm not sure he's centralist. I think he's actually, I would actually consider him far left myself. Mm. Um, yeah. I think US and UK are being attacked by Russia and China to weaken the power of the West through destabilization through social media, products that we buy, and unfortunately making the youth sexually confused. I hope this makes sense. I listen to you guys to educate myself on uh, on options that are completely opposite to me. It is interesting. Great pod, lads. Cheers, Naomi. Love that. I love yeah, that. Um, do you, do yeah. you know what? It, it wouldn't surprise me. Like I, I, but I believe Russia heavily influenced. Like, um, <laughs> say for example, do you know the South Fork stabbings. Yeah. The two the two pictures that got released on social media of apparent uh, perpetrator who stabbed the children mm. were apparently released by Russia. Yeah, it, 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 you can't say it doesn't happen, like because both sides, yeah. you know, because everyone's sides now. Mm. Like the, the the left in America said that the Russian disinformation is what is what led to Trump's election in twenty sixteen. Yeah. So they accept it happens, but then when it, when other sides say it happens to destabilize, oh no, that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. People need to realize you're all on the same fucking side, really. Divide yeah. and conquer, people. Get with it. This is uh, the, obviously we got another bit of feedback here. Sorry, Stevie. Stevie. Um, oh, thanks. So she's thanking us because we wished her well because yeah. she was in bed with some pussy foot fucking illness. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh, thanks. Uh, finally started to feel better today. My son Oliver has, has overheard me listening to you guys, and he said, these boys are funny. 
laughing emoji uh, and then she's very, also the tgi's chicken from iceland is really good not quite as good as tgi's but worth a go i did get some and it was exactly as she described it there uh, yeah. yeah so that was it from the patreon and the and the feedback on the spotify there um cheers for everybody that fed back there was a bit of feedback on the on the youtube I always forget that bit for some reason please 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 comment on anything we put on youtube give it a like give it a bit of a few minutes watch or whatever we're starting to finally get some slow growth on youtube very very hard when you're shadow banned but um i'm really trying to trying to get some uh, speaking of youtube i did a review the other day of my chat that i had years ago with david weiss with me in the corner critiquing the the conversation for the whole thing so that's up there now on a youtube exclusive um and i've got some whiny bitch on there today um telling me that i haven't got any brain cells etc because he's a flat earth prick why do people think that's an insult oh, you're thick you've got no brain cells i'll go yeah i know you know what he said? 24 hours yeah. sun's easily proved on a flat earth. I said, go on, improve it. I said, come on my show and prove it. You ain't worth it. Yeah. All right, yeah. On. You're about 12. <laughs> Fucking knobs. Sorry, Abs. All right. So uh, anyway, look, should we jump over now and get a Patreon um, yeah, hate yeah. of the week done? I am yeah. My hate of the week this week is going to be guinea pigs. What's yours? Do you know what you've got one yet? Uh, yeah. Neighbours playing loud music. Neighbours? Yeah. You've done that about eight times now. Have I? Yeah. But is it still an ongoing issue? It's still an ongoing issue. Right, let's go we'll get into that then when we get over yeah. there. Right, cheers everybody for listening. Um, please go subscribe to Patreon if you want to get the deal now of less than a quid a week before November, if you're on Apple anyway. Um, and I'll reiterate again, if you're on Patreon, don't panic. Nothing's happening to your price ever because you're already on. It's just they're trying to put it through as an in-app purchase now um, when you get the app and you buy anything through the app they want their cut. So if you just don't do anything through the app from the app store on Apple, nothing will happen to you. And if you already have it, nothing will happen to you. Right. So, so there's, there's a panic does isn't necessary to think, Oh shit, my money's going to go up and it's not, I'm, I'm never going to put the prices up. Right. So we'll figure it out. All right. Thanks everybody for, for listening and watching today. Um, we're going to jump over to Patreon now to do a hate yeah. of the week and maybe talk about some other drivel like we always do for a good little <laughs> half an hour. What was that you were just doing there? Close on in your camera, wasn't it? No, I was uh, drawing a curtain. All right. Did yeah, they have any did, pencils did, and did. pens on you? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of shit drawing. We're going to put that on the wall next week yeah. so we can all see it. All right, cheers for now. We'll catch you. Patreon, we'll catch you in about two seconds. Everyone else, adios. Oh, by the way, next week is Patreon week anyway, so there's no show on the normal podcast, but we'll be talking about the Queen and the mysterious vanishing of children in Canada from the 60s or whatever it was or the 70s. See you next week for, for those people and to everyone else, see you in a couple of weeks. Adios for now. Adios. You've been listening to Whatcast. Follow us on social media at Whatcast or Whatcast Podcast. Or email us at whatcast at gmail.com. Even if it don't affect your wages. Oh, my God.